Today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Jordan 4 Nike SB in the pine green colorway. We'll also be comparing them to the military blacks to see the differences between the cuts and materials. And I'm going to hit the streets later in the video to see if people think this is actually the sneaker of the year or not. But first things first, let's go ahead and crack this box open and see what these things are talking about. So looking at the box right here, you have your classic Air Jordan 4 style box with the lift off lid, but you have a major twist. You have kind of an all over sail type of color on there. And then you have gray hits with the Jumpman in the center and the flight on the top of the lid. And then on the back side, you have a Jumpman with a Nike SB logo and on the front side you have the same thing as well now on the size tag it reads Air Jordan 4 retro SP SP is for special projects and the colorway says sail white pine green now these are a size 9 unfortunately I wasn't able to get my size yet but it's okay I'll end up getting them but either way shout out to the homies over at hearth for letting me use these for the review and don't worry I'll be getting my size 13 in no time and I made sure that they gave me a size 9 on the military blocks as well so that way the comparisons are the exact same when it comes to sizings cuts and materials now lifting off the lid of the box right here you have all gray on the inside and then you have your cement print paper and then you got the shoe oh you got the shoe okay first impressions of this sneaker when i saw these on the internet i was already in love with them when i saw them in hand which was before this i was in love with them and now just seeing them again i still love this shoe now do i think this is one of the top air jordan fours of all time no but I definitely do think they did a really good job on this sneaker and I'm excited to see this collaboration with Jordan brand other than Air Jordan 1. And speaking of that, we can't get too far into this shoe without going over the history first. Kicking it way back to 2005, we saw Paul Rodriguez, also known as P-Rod, had his first model in collaboration with Jordan brand and those were known as the J-Rod. As you can see on the sneaker, there are definitely elements that represent skateboarding and Jordan brand with the elephant print. Now, as we all know, a Nike SB was established in the early 2000s and the Air Jordan 4 came out in 1980. So there definitely was a gap in generations when it comes to the two brands and how they established But at the same time they wrote really good together because back in 1985 the Air Jordan 1 used to go on sale And skateboarders used to actually pick them up and go skate them in the streets because it was a good alternative option for skateboarding shoes And next thing you know 2014 rolls around and we finally see an official Air Jordan 1 SB collaboration During this time we saw high tops and low tops multiple colors iterations and definitely crazy color schemes when it comes to Switching colors like LA to Chicago or the Lance Mountain versions where you can rip off the materials from skating them or just distressing them for your own customization. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we gotta go back to 2009 as well because during that time, Jordan Brand actually released its own skateboarding sneaker. They were called the Air Jordan Flip Sides. They did multiple colors and iterations of this shoe and honestly, it didn't last too long. So to see all this stuff coming full circle again 10 plus years later, yet this time they're actually doing it on their retro versions, they're up to something really good this time. And we all know the Air Jordan 4 has been trending over the past year now with all the new sneakerheads coming into the game and TikTok trends and you name it so with that the perfect blend has come to create this sneaker right here and when these came out people were camped out all over the nation trying to get their hands on these shoes so now that you guys know a little bit more about how the shoe came about let's go ahead and start breaking down all the styles cuts and materials and get to the comparisons as well because there's definitely some differences between these and some regular Air Jordan 4s starting with the bottom of the shoe you have your classic Air Jordan 4 outsole but two things that definitely stick out for me is first off you have the Nike compared to the Jordan branding right here which gives you that OG vintage vibe and then the other part is the gum on the toe and the back end not only for style and dope look but this is actually gonna be better for performance when you're actually skating the shoe doing different heel and toe flips on the skateboard for those that didn't know these tan gum bottom outsoles are known to have more traction than your typical outsoles so some people might even ask why didn't they do it all throughout the entire thing but honestly I think it's a nice touch with the front and the back and not too much going on with the midsole as it rolls up the foot now looking at the side of the shoe right here you have your two-tone green and white midsole your red air unit which I think is a really really nice touch because that goes along with the tongue and the insole which we'll get to in a second but overall the midsoles look really clean now another thing to note on the midsole and the outsole you have a white rubber and a white paint on the midsole but when you get to the upper you have more of a creamy kind of sail colored white compared to a pure white which you'll definitely see the difference between the two when I put these against the militaries later now looking at the sneaker in hand like this I can't say oh I just visually see so many differences between the shoe compared to actually touching it and then that's where you start to feel the differences as well so the leather is really nice yes you have a nice premium thick leather here and a nice good suede right here now this suede could easily get messed up from skateboarding in it but again they decided to do that compared to a leather or something else so I can understand that aspect because this is definitely similar to the color blocking and style of the military blacks in that same pattern that you see on Jordan 4 color patterns now looking at the arm of the shoe and the green tabs right here 
filling them, it's way different than your normal version. These are a lot more flimsy and they feel a lot more rubbery in general and softer compared to the military blacks. Those are gonna be a harder plastic. Now looking at the image, you're probably not gonna be able to tell, but I'm telling you right now, they feel way different. You can see, hopefully you can see right here, they move way different just off of this motion right here, just let you know, because typically you could just bend it back and forth, but this, you can literally turn it left and right and everything. So I think that's a good thing for the sneaker to give it that flexibility for performance and then also be able to have that durability without having the plastic breaking while you're skating. Now these come standard with a pair of sail flat laces to match the upper. You have your nets and your mesh the same color as well behind that on the top and the side of the shoe. You have a really, really premium leather tongue as well and then your Jordan 4 patch with the red Jumpman and the green flight just below that. Now looking behind the tongue, you have your pine green right here with your classic Air Jordan 4 branding upside down and that's actually gonna be on both shoes. Might have been dope if they kind of added another element to that on the tag. I know sometimes they like to switch up the text on there. But either way, I still love the classic Kate, so I can't be mad. Inside of the sock liner, same color right there with that sail kind of light white color. And then you have your red insole with the white Nike SB in the air just below that. So it's kind of dope to see that infused together, especially with a little bit slightly different branding on there with the air underneath it compared to the back of the shoe right here where you see just Nike SB, which we'll get into in a second. But we got to talk about the insole. A little bit more so if you look at the insole right here you have your dream cell insoles but if you look at a nike sb sneaker taking out the insole it's a lot thicker and you actually have a pad on the front end right here and you have your zoom unit on the back end around the heel now some people say they should have done that on the four to make it even more comfortable and i can see the other people with the argument saying hey they already put the air unit underneath the sole right here compared to sbs where they don't have that air unit so it's kind of countering it so i could see why they decided not to go with it but at the same time, if they would have added this element to the shoe, I definitely feel like it would have probably made these even way more comfortable with having this. But again, that's all preference based. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section about that. Now let's take it to the back tabs and talk about this real quick. Again, on here, like I said, you usually have your Nike Air on the back end, like we have the Nike on the bottom. If it said Jordan, then you have your Jumpman on the back end. But these are definitely giving us those OG vintage vibes. And the shape of this shoe is really, really good when it comes to the original Air Jordan 4s from 1980. They did an amazing job on the shape of this sneaker and we'll talk about it in a second compared to the military blacks because there's some differences on that as well. But one thing that we have never seen before is the Nike SB logo right here just below that. So this fusion together what they have done it looks really, really good, and I'm not mad at it. I would not be mad if we saw another set or a whole series of Air Jordan 4s, and there was like four or five different colorways, and we all had these special ones, and they did these things, and maybe, I don't know, they're kind of running out of time when it comes to the whole like painting in one shoe, and then you wear it and distress it, and it changes colors. I don't know if they're gonna do that on a Jordan 4. They don't do it that often. Like we've seen Levi's and people kind of distressing it and coloring it and th different things like that. But I don't know, I, I might be interested to see how that goes when it comes to the Jordan 4s. But I'm definitely not mad at the whole like just single color, good color blocking, can't go wrong with the classics. You could easily duplicate this sneaker in any color on the rainbow and it would look dope. Now another thing to notice on the back end of the tab right here, and I think they should do this on every Jordan 4, not just SBs, but this tab right here is very, very flimsy and rubbery, just like the tabs on the front end. And as you see, it just pops right back up super easy. And the plastic ones on the military blacks, those are very firm, hard, and sharp at the top end. So when you're wearing this sneaker, this is gonna be cutting up your Achilles, especially if you got low cut socks and you're showing some skin right there. Trust me, it is not comfortable. So with this right here, not only for performance, but just everyday use, Jordan brand. Please do this on every single shoe. Trust me, your customers will be happy about it. Prime example, I remember when the PSG 4s came out and I saw this on the back tab and I was so happy. They did the same thing on these as they did on the new SBs and I'm telling you right now, this is amazing. But anyways, besides from our rants of the back tabs, let's go ahead and get into the comparisons of the military blacks and see the differences between these two shoes. So first things first, shout out to Sandy Bodecker. I know everybody knows about Tinker for designing the fours, but a lot of people didn't know, Sandy had a huge impact on the Air Jordan 4 design and worked side by side with Tinker on that project. So to see all these years later and Sandy's impact on Nike SB in particular, and then his impact on the Jordan 4 and how it became such an iconic model, and then it come today and create the love child of the two shoes, I think it's just super dope. Also during the creation process of these two shoes, Nike SB and Jordan brand came together and recreated the tooling of the Air Jordan 4 
for performance to create the Air Jordan 4 SB. So it may look like the same thing on the outside, but trust me, the inside is definitely different. They also recreated the compound of the TPU to create a softer and more flexible feel. Now, besides the things about the internal parts of the sneaker, as you can see externally, like I said earlier, the whites is more pure here and more cream here, but the overall look of the shoe looks really, really similar when it comes to color blocking and everything like that. Obviously you have the black behind the mesh, this could have been white, which would have made it even look more similar. But at the end of the day, these shoes are definitely very similar when it comes to color blocking. That's why I wanted to do the comparisons. They also did a really good job on the cut and shape of the military blacks. And everybody has been talking about these a lot and I could definitely see these continue to rise in price because this has become a lot of sneakerheads new favorite shoe. So now looking at the outsoles, like I said, color blocking is a little bit different. And then as you can see, Jumpman over here, Nike over here. And then on the back tab, same thing. You got your Nike SB and then your Jumpman branding here. This isn't an OG colorway, so it doesn't come with the Nike Air, and honestly, I'm not mad at that. So now when you put these two shoes side by side and look really, really closely, especially at the back end of the shoe, you can see the SB is actually a higher cut shoe just slightly. Now, if you turn to the shoes to the side on the profile angle, you can see that the ankle area is a little bit higher as well when it comes to the SB. I think this is gonna be something that gives you just a slightly different edge when it comes to skating and performance when it comes to this shoe. So to some people, this may not mean much. And to other people, they might think this Jordan 4 SB is now the greatest four of all time because of the specs on the inside and outside of the shoe. Now, typically on this channel, I post a poll on my IG story and I see what people think, whether the shoe is fire or trash or do the comparisons. But this time, I think we need to hit the streets and see what people are talking about. Out of 10, I'm gonna rate these a nine. A nine out of 10. Yeah. Okay, yep. so out of all the Jordan 4s that recently came out, these are definitely best. one of the top ones. Yep, best okay. Jordan 4 this year for sure. Okay, yeah. do you think these are gonna be one of the top five Jordan 4s or the top five Jordan sneakers of the year? Yeah, I do. What I do you think they're gonna rank? It sounds like I'm just, uh, what do they call it? Bandwagoning the shoe right now, but this shoe is gonna be a top three, top five for sure. Then out of all sneakers, all sneakers, yeah. Jeez, First right. SB4, like yeah, they kill the color, of the materials. Like these are just even gonna get more popular in the summer. I feel like we'll, we'll find out at the end of yeah. the year. Rate this out of ten. Let me know what you think about this shoe. Uh, I think this is a nice shoe. Uh, it's the first SB, so I'm not gonna lie. It's gotta be like a, it's an eight. Eight out of ten. Yeah, it's an okay. eight. Okay. What are these gonna rank at the end of the year? Are these gonna be one of the top sneakers, top three, top five out of all sneakers? I'm not sure. I'm saying I'm saying top five all year. But top five. I, I don't really know my shoes that well, but I'm saying top five. Okay. So this is definitely a cop either way. Definitely. Okay, dope. Hundred percent. Appreciate it. Hey yeah. guys, welcome back to the to my show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what'd you rate these out of ten? Out of ten, <clears throat> actually, I didn't like them when they for, when I first saw them in photos, but then once we got them in person, I liked them. I'm gonna give them an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah. So are these gonna be in everybody's top ten, top five, top three? What do you think these are gonna be at the say, end of the year? Probably top ten. I don't know. I'm excited for the everything else to release, and then we'll see at the end of the year. Okay. But I'm gonna say it's top ten for sure. Top ten. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. All right, bro. I need you to rate these out of ten for me. Let me know what you think about Honestly, them. Honestly, these with the price, I say like probably like a good nine out of ten because they're SBs. You could use them for like skating because they got the good grip. Mhm. Mm okay. I respect that. I try to recognize all my customers, bro. I swear. Ugly. I'm fine. <laughs> Rate these out of ten. Out of ten, honestly, I'm gonna I'm give these a 9.5 out of ten. You know, I like the I like the cream colorway. I, I not a huge fan of all white shoes as of right now. I'm liking the cream colorways. I like the green. The one thing I don't like is the little bit of red. Uh, not a huge uh, fan of all white shoes. The CUNCs, it's a little bit different, you know. <laughs> it's different. It's different. But I like these shoes. I think it's a crazy concept. The one thing I I don't really care for is maybe the little hit of red. If they if they would have kept that green, I would have given a 10 out of 10. But right okay. now, 9.5. Okay, 9 .5. so at the end of the year, what are these gonna rate? At top three, top five, top ten? What do you think? I think right now because because I've looked at shoes for years on end. Ugh, wow. I'd probably say maybe top 10. I could sneak these into a top five category, but there's just so many other classics that are coming out, like the Cherry 12s. Yeah. 
That's a top five shoe right there. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. So, but right. top ten, I could slip these into top five maybe. So. Okay. I right, so I see. I like it. I like yeah. it. So after seeing all that, let me know what you think about this sneaker. These are reselling for around four to five hundred dollars depending on size, and I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the future. Black cats are eight hundred to a thousand dollars, so this could potentially easily be a thousand dollar shoe. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I'm still on the hunt for a size 13. I'm gonna be getting them soon. I was out of town, I was busy, I missed it, but it's okay. You know I always end up getting my pair. I'll see you guys in another one. If you wanna see more reviews like this, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys, I'm out. I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. My DNA, hey, hey, the only hey, choice I like to make what I'm aware it's today. One of those. I would never let you down, it's in my DNA The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today I was made for it, it's in the DNA